I'm just here checking uh, this crop of jade mung beans for um, sucking insects, uh, probably myriads in particular, but um, we'll see whatever else is here. Uh, as you can see, the sun's just coming up. It's nice and early. It's um, fairly hot weather at the moment. So it's very important to come out and do these sorts of checks very early when it's cool. Uh, that way you've got a better chance of picking up the insects foraging up in the top of the canopy um, rather than hiding and escaping the heat in the middle of the day. Uh, so these plants are very young as you can see, they're only sort of three and a half weeks old. Um, but still they are definitely, definitely uh, attractive to things like myriads. So we need to be here nice and early uh, and check them with a beet sheet preferably. Snuggle that down there like that. And with a one metre beating stick to make sure when you scale up your counts they, uh, they are calibrated to the thresholds that have been uh, formulated by the department. Give them a good hit. And nothing. And that's probably not surprising because we are very, very early on uh, in the budding stage. So they're probably not quite all that attractive just at the present time. But as you can see, we're starting to get a lot of reproductive action. And those little buds in there will be where we're getting stinging. Um, I also like to just pull these growing points apart just to see if we're getting any very small heliothus starting to get into the terminals. Sometimes very small heelys are a bit difficult to bash out of a beet sheet when your uh, mung bean plants are so small, so short. So it's always important to calibrate. Just, just have a look. Look at those flowers, those inflorescences. Not perfect. Uh, the other thing that we can probably have a look at here is it's worth speaking to um, the weed control aspect of, of mung bean production. Um, we don't have a lot of options for broadleaf weeds in mung beans. Um, it's one of the, the problems I suppose with um, growing mung beans uh, that aren't planned in a rotation. Uh, your weed control is very important. So, uh, spinnaker is one option that's commonly used as a post-plant pre-emergence. Um, and in this paddock here, uh, we used 80 grams of uh, spinnaker a hectare um, to control grasses and some of the broadleaf weeds. Um, and a lot of people have some fears about spinnaker and have reported some spinnaker damage quite routinely on some of the alluvial soils in particular. Um, I agree that that can be a problem sometimes, but I think it's a little bit overstated and I think some of the other root diseases probably um, have a bit more of a role to play than the spinnaker damage. And as you can see here, um, there's absolutely no spinnaker damage whatsoever um, and we actually started this pivot three days after planting. So um, if there was a potential for spinnaker washing in around the emerging seedlings and, and causing an issue, which should have really happened here. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not a problem. There's no yellowing, no stunting, uh, and no shortening of the internodes. So uh, yeah, it's a, a tick of health. The grass weeds are all controlled. Um, and you can see there's very little pigweed um, and yellow vines. So yeah, very happy with things at the moment.